Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be with you. Peace be with you too. President of the IREF. Yeah, Islamic Research and Educational Foundation, Hyderabad, India. And many consider you a scholar of Christianity, a student of Islam. Oh, mashallah, I feel very happy with that. You like that? I love it. All right, so let us get into this topic. We're going to be talking about, you know, in today's world, many people have drifted away from, from religion because they feel that it conflicts with science and many people they feel that to be dwelling into religion is to just put your brain on hold right it's just the feeling you get it's an you know, opium but when we as Muslims we say hold on no it's not that because Islam was we leading the way in science Islam is based on facts not lullaby stories that you tell your kids these are facts not fiction some people have a hard time believing it but they've tuned in today they're like, let me give these Muslims a shot. And Muslims are simply ones who surrender and submit to the one God. It's the way of life of Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, and all the messengers of God because the message was one, worship the Creator, not His creation. So how do you like to tackle this topic? Yeah, it's very important. Like, in the Western world, we find that especially the Western community com compared to many other places in the world, the Western people, especially the Europeans, the Americans, they are more into the progressive side of the world, the materialistic progress of the world, Science and technology is speaking here. M information is blasting everywhere today. So now, uh, please don't mistake me with the word blast. I'm talking about the information blast. So information is blasting everywhere. Now see, with this information coming, the Christians of Western countries who were reading the Bible for a very long time, they started pondering now. It's a good sign. They started pondering. They started finding what, man, what is this religion? The Bible is speaking so many things unscientific. When I read the book of Genesis, in chapter number 1, verse number 1 to verse number 30, you have some scientific errors which says that God created the world and the first day passes, the second day passes, the third day God creates the earth with the vegetation and then on the fourth day God creates the sun. What? What are you speaking man? The first day is passing, the second day is passing, the third day is passing. Earth is created, the vegetation is growing, and all this is happening without the sun. Without the sun, where is the phenomena of the night and the day? So the Western scientists, the Western Christians are genius. They are pondering. The book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 1 to 30, you have mistakes. So they say, no, we don't believe in this to be the word of God. Then now when you read, without photosynthesis, process of photosynthesis, without sunlight there can be a photosynthesis process this is the bible you're talking about oh yeah the book of genesis chapter number one the very first book the moment you open the bible the old testament the very first chapter the book of genesis chapter number one verse number one to verse number 30 un un unscientific facts yeah so this is what when the christians were reading this because in the western world we had a majority of the christians living and these people were getting educated they were trying to learn the word of god and the modern scientific theories when they were doing that what is this how can the day, first day, second day, third day pass without the sun? There is no sun and the days are passing. There is no sun and vegetation growing on the earth, unscientific. Then when you read the first chapter again, verse number 13 and 14, it says the sun and the moon give their own light. They were shocked. What man? Moon is a reflecting body. It's not a body giving its own light. It's not a star. It's a satellite. So these things, then when you read Genesis chapter number 1 verse number 29 and 30, it says everything on the earth is for you to eat. There are so many poisonous things. So these things and other religions, when they worship, making an idol of God with one hand, two hand, four hand, four legs, making an idol, idol of a female God and then showing her tongue coming out, holding the swords and all these things. When they see this, they say, is this the God? How can this be God? We don't believe in any God. That is how it started. And then back, if you trace back the history, the Renaissance period, the industrial revolution period of the 19th century, you find there was a big tussle happening between the churches and the scientific community. The church was very strong there. Everything the people did, they would take a fatwa, an opinion from the church. Unless the opinion doesn't come, the king couldn't do anything. The heads of state couldn't do anything. So the scientists were getting so much trouble from these religious uh, places that they thought one day, let's tackle this issue. And Darwin 
came as a mercy for those people at that time. The scientists, when they saw Darwin is writing a book, Origin of Species with, nat with the Means of Natural Selection, published in 1859, where he only actually expressed his personal views. If you read that book, Darwin, before propounding that book, when he went on HMS Beagle, on a botanical voyage, he writes to his friend Thomas and he says, Thomas, in a letter to Thomas, he says, you see, Thomas, I don't have any evidence with me to link my theories, but based on my own observations, based on my own observations, I feel maybe evolution took place. He never claimed confessingly, confirmly. Therefore, you see, we still call it the theory of evolution. But at that time, because there was a tussle between the scientists and the church, the scientists together, they gave a big publicity to this theory in order to put down the church and the religious beliefs. So as a whole, if you observe, an atheist is trying to be a little intelligent than many others who worship other gods, fake gods, demigods, or associate false gods with the only true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says there is no God, Islamically, he has agreed to the initial part of the Islamic creed, which is La ilaha, there is no God. What he needs to understand is, there is no God of the gods you are seeing in the world, but there is a God who is the God and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we need to educate this atheist. These people are generally referred as atheists, meaning they don't believe in God. And it's very difficult, believe me. It's very difficult to talk to these atheists. The reason, you want to speak to the Christian, you hold the Bible, you say your Bible says this, your Bible says that. A Christian wants to talk to the Muslim, he holds the Quran. We want to talk to the Jew, we hold the Tanakh, the Torah, the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim, which they refer as their Jewish scripture. We say this is what is in the Tanakh, in the Talmud or the Mishnah or the Misnah. This is what we talk to them. But speaking to an atheist, he has no platform. So individually you have to deal with them. But still, there are some general ways where you can deal with an atheist. One thing the atheist actually tries to be is, tries to prove himself smarter than the people following the religion is. He tries to say, as you said rightly in the initiating this show, you said he tries to prove that he is very scientific. So if he is talking about science, he needs to understand that the greatest of the scientists, Einstein, Edison, Copernicus and their likes, they all believed in religion and the God. Now Nate, you named Einstein, who else? Say, name some of these scientists, these were prominent scientists yeah. who believed in They believed the in religion and God and Einstein even has a popular statement to give. He says, science without a religion is lame and a religion without science is blind. So what we Muslims are saying is, if you say Bible is unscientific, I stand by it. I agree. Bible is unscientific. You bring any other scripture, a religious scripture, yes, there are many things which are unscientific. But subhanallah, wallah, by God I swear, the Quran has so many things which are scientific, spoken at a time when there was no way of speaking those subjects, no chance of a human being talking about those things which you and me as human population of the modern world just discovered a few years back. We're going to have to take a break and I'm no, going to have you go into these when we come back. Sure, inshallah. God willing. We'll be inshallah. right back for inshallah. more here on the Dean Show. Inshallah. Back here on the Dean Show with the president of the IREF, Bible scholar. He considers himself just a student of the Quran, which you have a lot of knowledge of the Quran. Also, you prefer not to be called Sheikh Mufti Malana. <laughs> <laughs> we just call you Brother Imran. Yeah. And may God Almighty, Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the Mashallah. earth, the same God Jesus worshipped. That's the God that Muhammad called us to worship because he was the last and final Mashallah. messenger. And that's what we're doing. We're continuing the legacy of only worshipping God and not his creatures. True. So, we discussed the inaccuracies, the unscientific things that are mentioned in the Bible that later started a conflict with people of reason, of people of science, of intellect. They were like, hold on, this can't be from God. This can't be right because it's contrary to human intellect and science. So there was a clash, right, of civilization. True, true. But you're saying that the Quran is unlike any of these books because it's not man-made. 
It's from the creator? From the creator. And it has course, scientific facts. 100%. That are verifiable. Verifiable. Come on, give it, give it up. What are you holding back Subhanallah. Can Subhanallah. you give it up? Yeah, of course. Let's get it. Let's have it. See, People are waiting. See, first, Time is money, brother. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. It's more precious than They're the money. Waiting. They're waiting now. Mashallah. <laughs> If you observe one thing before I go in deep about the Quran, let me first introduce very briefly what the Quran is. The Quran is unlike any other religious scripture on the face of the earth. This Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth existing today since the time it was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad in its original form. No other scripture except the Quran is in its original form. From the time of Muhammad what has been written, what was preserved by his companions, even today, those copies are preserved in British India Museum, in Istanbul. All these places you will find them preserved. Take those copies, tally them with any copy of the Quran anywhere in the world. You will not find an iota of a difference, not a full stop difference, not a comma's difference. So this is one of the miracle of the Quran. The other miracle of the Quran is all languages in the world tend to change in their vocabulary within a century. But Quran, since 1430 years after its revelation, still has made Arabic remain the same language. Quran has saved Arabic language, mashallah. What was revealed 1430 years back, an Arab speaking today, reading the Quran, he understands it exactly, and this never happens with any other language of the world. You just check English. Dai, thou, thine are outdated words now. No common person can understand it. But the Quran is understood. This is a miracle of the Quran. Now the question is, if the non-Muslim brothers and sisters, the atheists especially, they have never read this Quran properly. They never read it. If they would have read the Quran and pondered a little bit, they would have then observed and pondered to themselves, bringing it to their mind. How man, how can this be possible? 14, 30 years back, the Quran is revealed to some person by the name Muhammad. Encyclopedia Britannica records on the life of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad. He was born in 570 Christian era, 570 years after Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, he is born in the desert of Arabia, in Mecca, in the city of Mecca. And then this person, he grows up 40 years, he is in the midst of all his people. All his people are watching him grow for 40 years and they know him as an Ummi. If you read Surah Juma, Surah number 62, Ayat number 5, Surah Araf. Surah number 7, ayat number 157. Allah says, my messenger is an ummi. Ummi is an Arabic word which means who does not know how to read and write. If you read Surah Ankabut, Surah number 29, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ankabut, Surah number 29, that, وَمَا كُنْتَ مِن تَطْلُ مِن كِتَابٍ O Prophet, you were not the one to recite any book before this, nor could you write it with your right hand. Had you been able to read and write, the talkers of vanities would have doubted that you produced the Quran. So he didn't have a PhD at that time. Oh, not a PhD. No, forget PhD. He couldn't write his own name. He didn't know how to read and write. So if the atheist has this background about the Quran, then he starts reading, he will be like, oh man, what is this? This person, he didn't know how to read and write. He is living in the deserts of Arabia and the Arabian people are uncivilized. Historians have documented this. Oh, Thomas Not Carlyle. Thomas Carlyle in his book Heroes and Heroes, Hero Worship, he talks so much about the Arabs. The Arabs of the time before Prophet Muhammad brought the Quran to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were considered the human garbage on earth. Alexander passes by them. Julius Caesar passes by them. But does not consider worth ruling over there because it's a desert land. Nothing worth to take out. They didn't know that petrol existed there. They didn't know at the time. Had they known it like today, there would have been so many fights in the deserts of Arabia back at that time, like we find it today for the petrol. But they didn't hide at that time, because they didn't know, they just saw the desert, they passed by it. So now they're coming up and they pass all this up, and this is divinely being set up. It's yes. divinely being set up. Yes. So now the atheists like, okay, I get it, this guy, he, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, last and final messenger, they look at his history and they see that, look, he didn't know how to read or write, he wasn't a PhD. Even if he, even if he was, he still couldn't produce this book. By the way, correct? Absolutely correct. But he was, he wasn't. Correct. So now it talks about the human development of the embryo. It talks it about. It talks about so many so things much, in the Quran. Talk about these things, so please. To, to to begin with, just imagine 
the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory, because this is what atheists, they'll rest everything oh, on. Oh, yeah. They say, look, look, Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. It's a Big Bang. What's the Big Bang Theory? So they say in the 1970s, in the early 1970s, this was propounded. What is the Big Bang Theory? So they say the entire universe was in the form of a nebula. And there was a Big Bang. And with that Big Bang, the sun got produced. The stars got created. Everything in the heavens and earth, in the universe got created with this Big Bang. Can you imagine? Prophet Muhammad, on the authority of Allah, speaks about the Big Bang 1430 years back, which human beings discovered hardly in 1970s and 1430 years back. 610 Christian era, the Quran started to be revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Continued to be revealed for 33 years, from 610, for 23 years, from 610 to 633, the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you're saying the Big Bang is mentioned in the Quran? If you read Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, Ayat number 30, Allah says, Awalam yara allazina kafaru anna samawati wal ard, do not the disbelievers in Islam, do not the non-Muslims, Look at the creation of the heavens and the earth. They were joined together as one unit of creation. And we clove them asunder. And the Arabic word, in Arabic it means two separate bodies joined so closely that when you look at them, they appear just one. Can you imagine how pinpoint the Big Bang Theory is mentioned? Then, we were taught in our schools, what is the basic unit of life? The answer comes, water. Life is made from water. And then, we were taught cytoplasm is the basic unit of life. It contains 80% of water and 20% of plasma. The science advanced. 1950, Dr. Watson, he discovers the miracle item, the miracle item, I-T-E-M, the miracle item of our time, the DNA he discovered. 1950, Dr. Watson discovers then we say DNA is the basic unit of life for every living thing. Now in late 1990s, the medical scientists, they try to find out, fine man, DNA is the basic unit of life, fine, but how does the DNA itself survive? So they came to the conclusion in 1990s that the DNA for its own survival, it consumes the hydrogen ions from the water, water molecule H2O, meaning DNA is the basic unit of life for everything and the basic unit of life for everything consumes the water molecule for its own survival. And the Quran in Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, Ayat number 33, it says, the last portion of the Big Bang Theory Ayat that I just recited, the last portion, Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَ مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ هَيْ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ We made life from the water Still will you not believe? And imagine, can you imagine this part? Quran is revealed to Prophet Muhammad in desert, where for a drop of water, Prophet Muhammad and his companions would travel miles to collect a drop of water. And Quran is saying, we created life from the water. And Prophet Muhammad and his companions say, Samena watana ya Rasulullah. We heard what you said, this is from Allah. We obeyed, this is from Allah. That's our iman, mashallah. Who can speak this 14, 30 years back is the question. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more and to wrap it up here on The Dean Show. Back here on The Dean Show and we're talking to the world, we're talking to the atheist, the person who's trying to use his logic. He said there's no God out there. We agree, except the one true God. He just got to come a little step further. He don't want to worship a, a monkey or a man or a woman. He's like this. But you know what? And even an atheist ends up worshiping something of the creation. He ends up doing that because when you go away from worshiping the creator, you end up worshiping yourself maybe your desires, right? Or maybe that money, that woman, true. material things, right? True, true. Good luck, bad luck, all these other things. True. So you are making a God out there if you're not worshiping the one God. But we're giving facts, not fiction, about the scientific facts that you can ponder over. And we gave a few that you will come to conclude that there's no way that this man was getting this information but from the creator of the heavens and earth. So go on, the embryo, the embryo, Kefil Moore. Talk about this. is amazing. Yeah, of course. Give them a of taste course. so then they, said, can go, they can go yeah, check this of out. Of course, of course. First, we talked about the universe, yeah. the basic unit of life. Dr. Keith Moore, he is the dean of embryology of the Toronto Medical University in Canada. The descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The main man. Yeah, the main man, the main person there. 
of embryology. He wrote a book, The Human Development, and this book is referred as the syllabus book for the medical students in several universities of the world. He wrote two volumes. He was about to write the third volume. When some Muslim students of Saudi Arabia, they went to Dr. Kitmore, they said, Dr. Kitmore, this is a translation of the Quran. We want you to check Surah number 96, Surah Alaqa, Ayat number 2, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth ayat. These five ayat of Surah Alaqa, Surah number 96, were the first revelation to Muhammad. They said, Please check it, Dr. Kitmore, and tell us what do you say about this because Allah says, we created the mankind from Allah. So please tell us about the Allah. So Dr. Keith Moore said, give me some time for research. He made the research. He came in the 8th medical conference held in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. International medical conference. The video is there of this statement of Keith Moore. He was invited there. And when he came there, they asked him, Dr. Keith Moore, have you found out? So Dr. Keith Moore said, yes, I found out. They asked him, what did you find? He said, to my surprise, I took an Arabic to English lexicon. I opened it. I checked the meaning of the word alaqa. It had three meanings. Something appearing like a leech or a blood clot. Something that stings to something and something that sucks. And to my shocking surprise, this embryo at this stage particular, it has all the three perfect meanings applicable to it. They said, how? So he said, when you look at that embryo at that particular stage, if you read the third volume of the human development, the diagrams are given there. If you look at the diagram of the human embryo in the mother's womb, it appears to be like a leech or a blood clot. Then this is the first time when the human embryo stings itself, it attaches itself to the uterine wall of the mother and it sucks its foot from there. Uterine wall of the mother from its uterine pipe that the blood flows to the breast to produce the milk. So it sucks its food. He says, all the three meanings were perfect. So what do you say now? So he said, I have no doubt to accept that this Quran is not a human production book. It's impossible for any human being to know about it. If you read Surah Muminun, Surah number 23, Ayat number 12, 13 and 14, all the stages of the human baby till the baby grows out of the mother's womb from the time the sperm falls in the mother's womb is given there. On all this, Dr. Keith Moore says, Third volume I completed by studying. Except the Quran, there is no other book on earth that can give the best stages about the human embryo. How can Prophet Muhammad 14, 30 years back give that? Impossible. Journalists, as always, the media person, they played a game. Again, as they always do against Islam, they go to Kitmore and they say, You see, Dr. Kitmore, maybe Prophet Muhammad was an illiterate person. He must have cut open the womb of a pregnant woman. He must have seen it and written down in the Quran. So he said, yeah, you are right, but partially. So the journalist said, is that true? He said, yes, but partially because after doing that, after writing in the Quran, Prophet Muhammad hid the microscope in the desert land. They laughed. They said, Dr. Kitmo, what happened to you? There was no microscope at the time of Prophet Muhammad. So he says, the laugh is back at you because, why? Because man, it cannot be seen with a normal microscope. That is the condition of the embryo where you need a powerful microscope to see then how can Prophet Muhammad see only with the naked eye to write? This is from truly the Almighty God. Dr. Teja Teja Sain, another medical scientist from Thai University of Bangkok. He was made a research and he came in a medical conference, an international medical conference. He was so joyous. He said, I have come with a new research. When you receive a burn, it is not the nervous system responsible to give you the feeling, the sensation of the pain. There are sensory cells beneath your skin. They give you the pain. So the Muslim doctor was there. He said, Dr. Tejada Teja Sain, we know it from the Quran 14, 30 years back. He said, what? Impossible. They said, okay, please take the Quran. Check Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 56. And he went, made a study, came back in the 8th medical conference. When he was asked, what do you say now? He said, I have nothing to say about the Quran except that I declare in front of everybody, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no other God besides Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. What was the ayat? Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 56, Whoever disbelieves in Islam, the disbelievers, because they did not believe in the truth of Allah and Islam, the disbelievers will be punished in the hellfire. And when their skins get roasted, we shall give them new skins upon new skins, so that they keep feeling the pain, the sensation, 
of the burning of the hellfire. How can this be produced in a Quran? 14, 30 years back, Quran talks about the fingerprint. Fingerprint is different. When did we know? 1790. Sir Francis Gray said that. But we knew about it only in 1790. The Quran speaks about it in Surah Qiyama, Surah number 75, Ayat number 1 to 3. We know about so many things today. The Quran speaks much earlier about it. So an atheist should actually ponder on all this. Dr. Maurice Bukel, a French surgeon who wrote a book, Etla Bible, Etla Quran, Etla Science. He said the Bible, the Quran and the science. And in that book, he came out with several scientific errors in the Bible and he became a Muslim. He was a French surgeon. And he, we come to know today that this Quran that we read has about 1000 ayat. 1000 ayat are generally mistranslated in English as verses. 1000 ayat that deal purely with medical science. Meaning about one sixth of the Quran deals with medical science. Of those 1000 ayat, about 750 to 780 ayat have been agreed upon by the science today that were in the Quran since 14, 30 years. The science recently came to know, yes, they are true. About the remaining 250 to 220 ayat, the science is still backward. It does not have the means to measure the ayat. It can neither say they are right nor wrong. The Quran is more advanced than the science. And we Muslims, for us, Quran is the scale to judge the science. We don't take science as the scale to judge the Quran. And that is how we need to promote to the atheists about all this. Amazing. Amazing. We're out of time. We're out of time. One, one important fact, just the miracle of the Quran, the verbatim word of God, is amazing. If you come at it with a sincere, open mind, humble heart, the guidance is there, but you've got to want it. And the facts, not fiction, are there, but you've got to want it. And we've given just a taste so people can ponder over, but there's so much more. We could have talked about this, expounded on it for hours. Tell us also, just before we leave, you mentioned something about the miracle of just the prophet, his, the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came as, with the same message of Jesus, Noah, Abraham, Moses, to worship the one God, do good deeds, and warn people about the, the wonderful words of paradise, accountability on the day of judgment, and the hellfire you talked about for following your desires and turning away from the signs of God. It's a sign of God, if you're watching now, here, you got to reflect and really think because these facts are amazing. You mentioned just the prophet's life, how it's, and how a person can go back and go into it in detail, how it's been miraculously preserved, how he did that, how he did this. Expound on this for a second. Much and, like, and a normal person would go crazy. If, no, if, 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 true, very true, very true. See, this is one thing. The prophet, وسلم, I always see, I always feel the prophet as a person was itself a great miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. The reason for that, you see, Prophet Muhammad in the Quran, in Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayat number 21, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْفَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example for the mankind is in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa For all mankind, for the Muslims and the non-Muslims too. He is the best example. Can you imagine, he has nothing as privacy. No privacy. No privacy for him. Because the reason when Allah said he is the example, he walks outside the house and he has all the companions microscopically, microscopically watching him. How does he sit? How does he smile? How does he relax? How does he shift his hair? How does he turn around? How does he look at others? How does he look when he becomes angry? How does he move his eyes? Then how does he wear the slipper? How does he wear his clothes? How does he talk to others? How, what are the statements he gives? Everything there is somebody noting down, there is somebody noting down the whole day. Everyone is watching him, just watching him. A Sahabi comes from another place to Medina. It was summer in Medina. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting. He had the buttons on the top of his shirt, two of them unlocked. They were not put on. The Sahabi sees him, returns back. He kept the buttons always like that for his own shirt. When the people asked, what's this? He said, I saw my prophet that way. So that so shows how microscopically they were trying to observe everything. So now, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he is outside, everyone is watching him. Not just the Muslim Sahaba, the non-Muslim people, the non-Muslims, the pagans of Makkah, they are watching him. The disbelievers in Islam, they are watching him. The reason? This person is talking something, but is he practicing that or is he not practicing that? Everyone is watching him. And now imagine the situation. 
Amazing, amazing. He's a little relaxed. Enters the house. The moment he puts his foot in the house, his wives are observing him. How is our husband sitting? Because he is not just our husband, he is the Rasul of Allah. How does he sit in the house? How does he lie on the bed? How does he ask us to uh, serve him? How does he behave with us? He is so happy with us. He is so good to us. So kind to us. So humble to us. We are so enjoying with him. He educates us. He takes care of the homely affairs. What kind of a person is this? And now when he lies down on the bed to sleep, he is in the sleep and still he is being watched. How does he sleep? When, is he, when he is sleeping, how does he look? Imagine man, we would commit suicide if somebody keeps watching us this way. And after so many eyes watching him, it's not cameras. Technologically the camera can go wrong. Human eyes are constantly watching him. And unanimously all the eyes that watched him had no other option but to accept. He is Al-Ameen and As-Sadiq. The most trustworthy to give what Allah gave to him and the most truthful of all. As far as his characters were concerned, the non-Muslims also agreed that he was the best of all, mashallah. Amazing, amazing. We got to go. We got to cut out. I've enjoyed talking to you and I'm sure everybody out there is enjoying this show. People can look you up at the IREF Islamic Institute. Research and Educational Foundation, Hyderabad, India. They can go to the YouTube, type I-M-R-A-N Imran, comma I-R-E-F in capital, and they've got the YouTube uh, videos on it. Inshallah, very soon our, video, our website is under renovation, and that would come soon. I-R-E-F-W-O-R-L-D, I-R-E-F world dot O-R-G. That's our website. Somebody wants to make a call to India, our number is plus nine one four zero six six seven seven four four one one. It's an easy number. Double nine one double zero nine one four zero double six double seven double four double one. That is the number anybody can call back in India, except on Friday. Fridays we are closed. May God Almighty the Creator reward you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Walaikum salam. Peace be with you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Death is a reality. It can approach every time, so the matter is serious. We really, really got to ponder what's the purpose of life. And Islam gives you all the facts, not fiction, on what you need to be doing in this life so you could be successful in this life and the next. Day of judgment, accountability. You're going to be either rewarded or you're going to be punishment. Punished. You're either going to be earning the reward of Jannah paradise or you're going to have a place in the hellfire. It's a fact and it's not fiction and that is what the show is all about to help you reflect about the purpose of life and help you develop a better understanding on why you've been created and where you're going when you die and what you need to be doing of good in this life so you can be successful and have peace in this life and in the next we'll see you next time continue to tune in also get a free verbatim word of God the Quran call the number 1-800-662-ISLAM or Go ahead and ask any of those questions that are lingering in the back of your mind so, again, you can have a better understanding. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you.